Hello and welcome back everyone. Now in today's video I want to talk about something that bothers me a little bit in the Linux community that I think has a negative impact on it similar to how I've done in a previous video where I was talking about toxicity in the Linux community and in that video I was specifically talking about you know the toxicity in forums where new users go to ask for help when they start using Linux for the first time and the fact that sometimes you know, the responses are just downright rude and that has a negative impact on Linux because it's gonna make people not wanna use it. And in today's video, similar to that, I wanna talk about something else that I feel has a negative impact. And that is when people pass unfair judgment toward Linux on account of its inability to run particular applications. And I don't feel like that's a valid complaint at all. Now, I get it. You may not like Linux, it might not be for you, and I don't think that everyone should be using it, but you know, when it all comes down to it, we need to be fair. If Windows is the platform for you, gets all of your work done, then that's great, continue to use it. If Mac OS gets all of your work done and you love that platform, no judgment whatsoever. And if someone comes to me and they say, you know, I don't like Linux all that much, I gave it a shot, it's not for me, that's totally fine. Now specifically in this video, I want to talk about when people pass unfair judgment about Linux on account of its inability to run particular apps. Now somebody might say, you know, in a forum or in a response somewhere online, Linux sucks because it doesn't run application X. And it's also popular that I hear, you know, Linux sucks because it doesn't run Windows apps. Now the problem that I have with these statements is that while it's okay not to like Linux, it's not okay to say that you don't like something based on a reason that's simply untrue. Now, nowhere online will you find any marketing material that promises Windows app compatibility or any kind of compatibility with applications not designed for that platform. Now, in the past, to be fair, we did have Lindos, later renamed Linspire, that did actually advertise support for Windows applications, but that project didn't really work out and it barely exists today, so we're gonna pretend like that doesn't exist. Now, nowhere online will you find on any Linux distribution page that I've ever been able to find any promise that Windows apps are supported. Why? Well, I'm sure all of you know this, but every operating system, and yes, I know Linux is a kernel, not an operating system, I know, but every operating system is essentially a platform that runs specific software. For example, you know, nobody on Windows that I've ever seen has complained that it can't run a DMG file downloaded from a website, which is, you know, normally for Mac OS. You know, people on Windows, they don't complain about that. They know that the .exe or .msi, whatever it is that they're running, is made for Windows, and they know when something isn't made for Windows, and they don't, you know, make fun of Windows for its inability to run Mac OS apps. You know, people generally get that. Even as a kid, you know, the mindset back then was, um, you know, each video game system runs different games. I mean, I had to choose between Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo. That was the hardest choice for us as a kid, you know. And But it, it just really wasn't any kind of issue that you couldn't put a Sega Genesis cartridge in a Super Nintendo. We all understood that the Sega Genesis had its own games and the Super Nintendo had its own games and that you couldn't, you know, cross those over to the other platform. We get it. And nowadays, nobody that has a PlayStation 4 gets upset that it can't run an Xbox disc. You know, we get it. Different system, different platform, a different set of software. Now, why am I bringing up gaming on a YouTube channel that is for Linux? Well, the concept is pretty much the same because even on a gaming system, you have an operating system and you have applications. And when we actually look at operating systems, the same logic applies. We can't get upset at Mac for not running Windows apps natively. And just like on Linux, we can't get mad that it can't run Windows apps. It's not designed to. Nobody has advertised that it will be able to do that. Yes, there are some tools you can use to force the compatibility, but you're essentially forcing things to work that weren't meant to work. So when it comes to operating systems, each OS has its own set of software. And that's how we need to think of it. So, you know, when someone says Linux sucks because it can't run Microsoft Office, well, that's not true. Yes, it's true that it can't run Microsoft Office natively, 
but it's not true that that's the basis of it not being good. Now, if we want to be fair, I use LibreOffice, and I've heard people say LibreOffice is bad. Well, that's not true. I've used it to publish four books, professionally published four books. I've had no problems whatsoever. When I sent files over to my publisher, they used Microsoft Office. They had no problems you know, opening any of the files that I send them that were created in LibreOffice. It's worked just fine. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but real quick, I want to mention my sponsor, Linode. Linode has been my infrastructure provider for quite a while now and has just recently announced their own managed Kubernetes service. And this enables you to combine Linode's ease of use and simple pricing with the infrastructure efficiency of Kubernetes. With the Linode Kubernetes engine, you can get your infrastructure and workloads up and running in minutes instead of days and scale resources in real time to meet your infrastructure needs. And with Linode's managed Kubernetes engine, the pricing is simple. Only pay for what you use. And with Linode's 99.9% .9 uptime SLA and bundled transfer, you can significantly cut costs when compared to AWS, GCP, and Azure. Designed with the open source ecosystem of Kubernetes, the Linode Kubernetes engine supports integration with tools like Helm, operators, and more. To help you get started with Kubernetes, Linode gives you access to in-depth documentation, video tutorials, and webinars. So go ahead and sign up at promo.linode.com slash learnlinuxTV to get a $60, 60-day credit to test out LKE or any of Linode's other offerings. I appreciate Linode's continued support of Learn Linux TV. Now, let's get back to the video. Also, you know, people will insult LibreOffice based on its inability to be compatible fully with Microsoft Office documents, which is not true. Again, I'm publishing books with LibreOffice. I am using LibreOffice for creating the files, and they are able to be opened in Microsoft Office. So there might be some edge cases here and there, but it's just not as bad as people make it out to be. And when it comes to me, I get all of my work done in Linux, and every video on this channel has been edited in Caden Live on Linux. Well, we're not going to talk about my older content before I started editing video or learning how to edit video. We're going to pretend like that content doesn't exist. But anyway, all of my work gets done on Linux. Linux does everything that I needed to do. Now, to be fair, some of you out there, you know, you have some applications that are required for some reason. Maybe you can't get them to work on Linux. They're not native apps. I totally understand. Maybe Linux isn't for you. Maybe you prefer Mac, you prefer Windows, all of that's fine. I don't really have a problem with that. But I just feel like when people judge Linux based on its inability to run applications that was never promised to be able to be run in the first place is just silly. I just don't understand that mindset at all. It couldn't possibly be more invalid. Now, it is perfectly fair to say, you know, Linux doesn't work out for me because I'm not able to run a specific application that I need to run. That's totally fine. You know, that's a true, honest opinion. But to basically trash the entire platform based on one person's preference or an opinion that it should be able to run applications it wasn't meant to run, that's doing a disservice. That's, that's doing a disservice to not only the Linux community, but the IT industry in general, because you're basically possibly steering people away from Linux that might otherwise enjoy the platform. So I think we have to be honest in both directions. I'm not going to recommend Linux where I don't think it makes sense. You know, if I look at someone's use case and they want to do a particular thing, run a particular application, I'm not going to recommend that they run Linux unless I really feel like it's going to be a good fit for them. But at the same time, we shouldn't judge Linux based on its inability to do things it wasn't meant to do. That's also equally invalid. I feel like we need to be transparent and we need to approach it. And if we see these negative criticisms in the Linux community or any community, you know, we shouldn't flame anyone or anything like that. Just be honest and say, you know, that's not a fair comparison. It was never meant to run that application. And just because it doesn't work, you know, doesn't work well for you, it doesn't mean that it's not a good platform for other people. We just need to be honest. And that bothers me when someone is steered away from Linux based on something that's not true. So we just need to keep it honest. So what do you think about this topic or anything else related to Linux adoption? And let's just keep all of the discussion in the comments below civil. We don't want to flame each other. In the spirit of open source, we want to be kind and have a conversation 
not an argument. So go ahead and put your opinions down there. Let me know what you guys think. And subscribe if you haven't already done so because I have some awesome videos coming and I will see you again very soon. Thanks for watching.